Thank you again, all of you for joining us today on the 2020 Chairman's Award informational webinar. Um, for those who do not know me, my name is Monique Kokar. I'm the Associate for Coastal Development at CATCA, and I am joined by my teammate, Cassandra Robledo. Cassandra, if you just want to say hi. Hi everyone, I'm Cassandra, the manager of Coalition Development, and um, for some reason my video is disabled, so sorry you can't see me today, but I'm happy to see everyone on here. Not your faces, but your names. All right, thanks a lot, Cassandra. So uh, just before we begin, um, I know you guys have heard this script about 10,000 times already, um, but in terms of Zoom, we uh, this is the webinar interface. Um, you do have a chat box and a Q&A box. Um, please utilize both of those uh, boxes as you see fit. Um, we will have a QA and a um, time after the uh, presentation for you guys to ask questions. And um, if uh, for some reason you um, have any questions after the webinar, feel free to email training at catca.org and we will do our best to get back to you regarding the Chairman's Award. So with that, let's go ahead and begin. All right, so what is the Chairman's Award? That is the big question, right? What are you guys applying for? So the National Coalition Academy's Chairman's Award gives CATCA's Executive Chairman, General Arthur T. Dean, the opportunity to recognize a 2021 NCA Graduate Coalition that has distinguished themselves by applying and operationalizing what they've learned throughout the NCA. So you guys have just finished all three weeks of your virtual NCA. Congratulations on that. That's a huge achievement. And now you guys are taking that information that the trainers have taught you back to your communities and are going to start utilizing that to work on your products and then eventually um, create community change towards youth um, substance misuse prevention um, in your communities. So past winners of this award have shown outstanding knowledge and achievement understanding and applying of and the application of the information taught at the National Coalition Academy. So basically this award is for the coalition that best shows uh, the training transfer that they learn from the NCA training to their uh, products that they're submitting for graduation. So what are the benefits of applying for the Chairman's Award? So working towards this award encourages coalitions to reflect on their academy experience and how they show outstanding achievement in integrating what they have learned into their coalition work. Um, the winning coalition will receive one complimentary registration to the 2021 virtual national leadership forum, which is gonna be held in February. Uh, the winning coalition will also have the opportunity to speak during the 2021 NCA graduation um, about their process, their journey through the Chairman's Award, their journey through the NCA, what it means to them and their coalition, and how they, they want to use um, the NCA training as well as the Chairman's Award um, in uh, working towards uh, their goals in the community. This award will also open the door to a lot more possibilities at CATCA for your coalition, such as future leadership and coalition development opportunities. Um, we have other um, awards as well, such as our Got Outcomes Awards, as well as you can be featured in our newsletter that goes out to 4,000 plus coalitions across the world, um, as well as um, be involved in upcoming projects that CATCA um, is, um, is undertaking with uh, our, our, um, our um, partners, as well as um, other um, stakeholders. So what are the benefits of winning the Chairman's Award? What better than to hear from past winners to see what uh, the award has done for them? And this picture to the left is last year's uh, Chairman's Award winner. Uh, it's Lori Stillman from Milton Substance Abuse and Prevention Coalition in Milton, Massachusetts. Um, however, we're gonna begin with a 2018 Chairman's Award winner, uh, Love Detroit Coalition and Dr. Grenade Dudley. My name is Dr. Grenade Dudley. I hope you are all well and safe as you continue the work of your coalitions during this pandemic. I am the chairperson of the Love Detroit Prevention Coalition and the president and CEO of the Youth Connection. 
As our name implies, we're located in Detroit, Michigan, and we have targeted three east side Detroit zip codes. Population 90,000 plus, addressing youth prevention efforts around marijuana, the non-medical use of prescription drugs, and underage drinking. One of our problem statements are too many youth using marijuana, root cause, availability, local condition, too many unauthorized marijuana dispensaries in our zip codes. Now, if this sounds like that logic model you have been working on in the National Coalition Academy, that's exactly what it is. We had Stephanie and Christina as our academy trainers, and I know the academy trainers that you have are equally committed dictators. They did not let us leave without our questions being answered. And if the day's agenda was 8 to 5, believe you me, we went from 8 to 5. However, they challenged us and repeatedly asked, is it measurable and can you take a picture of it? The National Coalition Academy allowed us to be with a group of like-minded individuals and coalitions from across the country, whom we're still connected to. Our logic model came to life. I know your academy trainers are like ours, and they helped us to see the impact of what we were attempting to do and made us account for the outcomes that we needed to obtain. For me, however, the two statements that we took away that ignited our efforts were, can you take a picture of it? And more importantly for me, not about me without me. Had we heard these statements before? Yes. But in the learning environment we were in at the academy, it resonated. We focused on our youth and stopped paying lip service to what we wanted to accomplish. We stopped telling our youth what we needed and wanted from them and started asking them what they needed and what they wanted to be done. They complained about the unauthorized marijuana dispensaries and liquor stores in our neighborhoods and we taught them how to conduct environmental scans. And through their photo voice project, they took pictures. They presented before city council and asked our city leaders, what are you going to do about it? The end result, our youth were responsible for closing an unauthorized marijuana dispensary in their neighborhoods. We utilized geofencing and sent prevention messages to any youth in our zip codes that was in the parking lot or inside a marijuana dispensary or liquor store. The screams you heard coming from Michigan in 2019 were the youth, parents, and coalition members, but mostly me, when we learned from General Price that we had been awarded the Chairman's Award. The national recognition of the Chairman's Award resonated for our coalition throughout the state. The State Department of Health and Human Services Substance Use Disorder Director called to congratulate us and attended our ceremony. The Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network, our PHP, and funder were ecstatic and shared our news with their board of directors. The credibility of our coalition in the communities we served magnified. More importantly, our youth engagement soared. The benefit of winning the Chairman's Award for our coalition is seen in the increased collaboration with our diverse partners. The cities of Detroit Health and Police Departments and the DEA came to us to facilitate, facilitate the DEA Take Back. We hosted Take Backs at every Detroit Police Precinct, with our pharmacy sector sending pharmacy residents to each precinct to answer questions. Our health department has provided us with Narcan and we have trained over 2,000 individuals, 350 of them being youth. We implemented geofencing and received grants from Blue Cross Blue Shield to create PSAs to address the opioid epidemic. We expanded our pharmacy subcommittee and our faith and parent sectors, which means our efforts are expanding in the communities that we serve. Because our results are measurable, and yes, indeedy, we took pictures. My advice to each and every one of the 2020 Chairpersons Award applicants is to everyone to apply. Tell your stories and make it difficult for them to choose just one. That is what our work is all about. Applying for the Chairman's Award forces you to look at your work and the impact you are making on the youth and the communities that you serve. But don't forget, make sure what you are undertaking is measurable 
and ask yourself this question, can you take a picture of it? I hope to see you at Forum. All right. And that was Dr. Dudley. Um, like, you know, she said, the Chairman's Award definitely has um, reverberated across uh, not just her coalition, but through community. You know, you, she got a lot more um, face time with leaders, got more grants out of this. So it definitely has diversified her coalition's um, reach in the community and has definitely cemented her coalition's, um, have, you can even say legacy in the community um, and gives them a lot more of a purpose. Um, we're going to move on to one more. We're going to move oh, wait, on. Wait, Monique. Yes. Sorry, just th throwing this in there because I worked with with Dr. Dudley, and I can say that honestly, their what they've done and the work that they're doing is is well known all throughout the city of Detroit. Um, and that, I mean, that's a big feat. I know that many of you, if you understand what's going on in Detroit, there's so much there. There's so much going on with substance use, with you know, you know, the cultural, the cultural situations, the the violence, and so for them to be able to tackle a lot of these issues, and they've seen a lot of of outcomes already in their coalition, and um, even now with working with CADCA, they're a part of one of our special projects called the Non Opioid Choices Project, and so really this this award can really help to open the door for just many other things that you you really wouldn't think um, as it gives credit ability not just to your community but also you know throughout um, the surrounding communities as well as within CADCA so I, Dr. Dudley is, is outstanding I'm sure many of you know who she is she, she's an amazing coalition leader so um, and now yeah we'll move to to Lori Stillman but I just wanted to throw out there that you know Dr. Dudley has been doing amazing work so um, please please apply. Thanks a lot Cassandra. All right, let's go ahead to Lori Stillman. Uh, this is Milton Substance Abuse and Prevention Coalition. This was last year's or 2020 at the Forum 2020, so 2019 winner. And let's see what she has to say about her experience. Our National Coalition Academy training really helped us to up our game, especially when it came to conducting a comprehensive community assessment. We learned how important it is to build our logic model using strategies informed by local conditions and root causes. The Academy also reminded us of how important cultural competency is in doing this work. And this in turn influenced how we collected and analyzed data for our assessment. So through surveys and focus groups with youth, we were able to answer the question, but why here? Importantly, we also hired a statistician to look at demographic differences such as gender and race. By disaggregating our data, we learned new information such as that girls' alcohol use was increasing while boys' use was decreasing, but the inverse was true around marijuana use. And we also discovered how important youth mental health is in influencing substance abuse in our town. We found a strong correlation between those who reported chronic depression and higher substance use rates. And we found that specific populations, such as LBGTQ, Caribbean and Asian youth, had higher rates of depression. Taking the time to disaggregate the data really helped us to target our strategies in more culturally appropriate ways and ensure that all youth needs are being attended to. It was really helpful. All right. Well, what are the requirements to apply? Uh, there are three requirements. You must be participating in the 2020 National Coalition or New York State Academies. Uh, you must have attended all three weeks of the NCA or the New York State trainings and you must be in good standing to graduate at the 2021 NCA graduation. And that includes uh, submitting your products in a timely manner to your trainers. Um, and I believe that everyone on this uh, webinar will be doing just that. So you guys are all welcome to apply. All right, let's get into some nitty gritty now about what actually are the application requirements so applications must meet these basic formatting re requirements to be reviewed. Um, we changed it up a little bit this year, made it a little more interactive. Last year, if um, 
any of you are familiar, we had a 10 page paper. Um, takes you back to your college days, right? And your dissertation days. Um, that's not fun. So we changed it up to a PowerPoint, Prezi or video format. Um, it's a lot more interactive. Uh, you, you will have fun doing it. And uh, you will also discover, hopefully discover some new talents of you guys being able to video edit or create really nice presentations. Uh, your PowerPoint and Prezi presentations must not exceed 15 slides. Um, all required contents listed on the next slide, which we will uh, be covering shortly, must be covered in sufficient manner. Uh, if you are doing a video, you must not exceed 10 minutes. Um, video must be engaging to the audience. For example, reading a script to the camera for 10 minutes will result in points being deducted. Uh, photos, logos, videos, and other images that add value to your coalition story are more than welcome. And application, applicants are free to choose, are free to submit this information in whichever format, um, PowerPoint, Prezi, or video they ch they choose, so long as they all requ all require content is included. Um, and we encourage you to display your coalition's creativity. This is an excellent platform for you to do just that. Um, now, this next uh, criteria is very important. Uh, it is a hard deadline. Um, applications will be due no later than 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, November 13th. And I know it is Friday the 13th, and that is a little bit unsettling to some people, but it is the deadline. Um, and applications must be submitted electronically to the coalition development team at training at CATCA.org with the subject line 2020 Chairman's Award. All right, let's go into some more detail. This is exactly what we want from you guys in your application. And by the way, this will all be uploaded to the new Chairman's Award website, uh, which will be coming shortly within the next uh, week. Required content. Description of the coalition and community. So your coalition name, city, state, community type, which is, for example, rural, inner city, et cetera. Year the coalition was established and demographics. All right, the National Coalition Academy overview. Describe your NCA experience and answer the question, what does the NCA mean to me and also to my coalition? Include how your academy experience changed your perspective on coalition work. And a note for that, um, preferable in video format embedded into a PowerPoint. However, a simple slide is also accepted. Going down to your National Coalition Academy products, describe how your coalition has incorporated each of the five products in your coalition work. Uh, note all five products must be featured for your application to be accepted. These are your five products that uh, your trainers have been drilling into you since week one that you are uploading to your workstation um, in order to graduate. So you guys are seeing a trend that pretty much, you have pretty much done all this stuff anyways to graduate. And we are just requiring a few extra things for the chairman's award application to be completed. Um, next, incorporating the strategic prevention framework. Select two steps not listed below of the SPF and describe how the coalition is incorporating them into their coalition's efforts based on what you learned in the academy. Describe how the coalition is incorporating sustainability into the coalition efforts and describe how the coalition is incorporating culture competency into their coalition efforts. So just to recap, we want you to include sustainability and culture competency, but also choose two other steps of the SPF in addition. Uh, the next uh, part of it, successes, learn, lessons learned and growth. Um, how has your coalition shown success since attending the academy? Um, this is relatively fresh, um, you know, with our current environment, uh, with the pandemic and all that. Um, your, your journey after the Coalition Academy will be a lot more different than any other year. Um, let us know what's going on. How has the NCA uh, prepared you uh, and your coalition to take on this world that we're living in right now? Uh, what lessons did you learn in the Academy that has helped or will help you change, improve the coalition work and or its operations. And the next steps. Briefly describe future goals the coalition has set as a result of attending the academy and the steps you will use to achieve them. And how did you transfer the knowledge gained in the academy and incorporate it in your coalition's work moving forward? 
And again, this will all be on the Chairman's Award website, uh, which is due to go live in the next week. All right, so next steps for you guys. If you guys are interested in applying, and I hope you all still are, um, like I said, CATCA is launching its brand new Chairman's Award webpage in early October. Um, the webpage will consist of the Chairman's Award application requirements, application instructions, commercial that we actually shot, um, which uh, includes some more um, information and more highlights uh, regarding uh, previous uh, Chairman's Award winners, um, and a message from Geraldine, uh, past winner testimonials, and the application itself. And a little bit of a bonus for everyone who's attending this webinar today, um, you will all be given some bonus points towards your application um, if you apply. So just a little bit of an incentive there. All right, well, that was very brief and succinct. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, good luck and stay safe out there. And um, I'm happy to field any questions in the chat box. If there are any, let's take a look. And as always, stay connected. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. And let's go ahead and see if there are any questions. All right, I don't see any questions yet. I'll just give it a few more minutes. Oh, okay. So Gwendolyn asked if the PowerPoint can only be 15 minutes long, do you, su do you suggest we set all our slides to run automatically? Um, I would say yes. Um, I, you know, we're not really um, we're concerned about um, the timing as much. If you feel like the, um, the slides would you can get more slides in within 15 minutes, then uh, please go ahead and do it. Um, and um, we'll just go ahead and, and review those. Uh, Julie, do we need to indicate on the application if we attend this, attended this webinar? Um, no, we have the registration list. Uh, we will go ahead and match uh, your application uh, to the um, uh, to the registration uh, list. Uh, Jessica, yeah, there is, is a it, scoring rubric. I don't, sorry. There is a scoring know. rubric. Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, 10. Okay, so for the PowerPoint, it's 15 slides. For videos, it's uh, 10 minutes. So for the scoring rubric, uh, we, um, in the past, we have not um, made that public. However, we, we could definitely take a look at making that public for your, for your uh, view. And uh, if we do, we will be posting that on our Chairman's Award website within the next week. So just yeah. go ahead and uh, navigate to that website and uh, you should find everything over there. Are PowerPoints and videos scored in a different rubric? Uh, no, they're all on the same rubric. We have a rubric that addresses both. So Marva, like for that, it's really about, with the video, what we will be looking, even with the PowerPoint right. for both, we're really looking at creativity. So it doesn't matter which way yeah. you, you put it. We do think that a video can be more engaging, although we yeah. know in times of COVID, depending on your capabilities, um, that's why we have the PowerPoint option, exactly. but um, I, we don't have them on a different rubric because we're looking for the same content for each right. of those. So that's right. why. The content is the most important thing. Um, we're not really as concerned about the format the content is delivered in as long as it's within the parameters we just presented. Um, but um, we definitely uh, recommend, you know, you decide between your coalition which would work best for you in the current environment we absolutely do not want you guys to you know break any social distancing rules or or, or parameters just to create a video um, the safety is definitely uh, a top priority 
Um, and Doug um, asked a question in the in the Q and A box. He says, if deciding to do a video presenting the PowerPoint, uh, do you all want a YouTube link? So one thing I will say. If you want to do a video, if you can make it engaging um, and, okay, so I'm trying to think how to say this. So we're, we're not necessarily wanting you to kind of present a PowerPoint over your video. If you are doing a video, we want it to feel more engaging, kind of showing your community, showing your coalition's efforts. Um, so we would suggest if you feel more comfortable with a PowerPoint to just do the PowerPoint. Um, but that's a good that's a good thought. We will take a look at how you guys can upload and and submit a video option if you're going that route, and then we'll let you know. Yeah, um, in in the past, um, for other uh, submissions that have Catka's work with a video, um, you know, people have used Dropbox, people have used YouTube, but we will definitely uh, post that on our website coming up in the next week on how we would like for you to submit. Um, but again, if you can only submit a certain way, then just let us know and we'll work with you. All right, uh, format for video, MP4, um, anything MP4, it can be um, .mov, um, it really doesn't matter on our end. We can um, view any uh, format of video really. Yeah, we'll just make sure that it can be submitted so that you guys aren't having to kind of Right. Uh, take out the HD or the high quality of the video. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll have all that on the website for you. Yeah. Yes, that's very important. We would prefer for all uh, videos to be in at least um, 720p HDs. Um, that's simply because it would just be easier for us to um, share um, during our graduation and other purposes um, in a virtual environment. All right, Julie asks, if done in video format, do we just submit the MP4? Does the video need to be uploaded to YouTube? Uh, Julie, we just um, talked about that. Um, doesn't really matter regarding the format and we will uh, have more information on the website, the Chairman's Award website in the next week on the exact process on how to upload uh, the video. Um, but rest assured, it will definitely be a simple way for you guys um, to be able to upload the video. And that the website is not made live yet. So we don't have that right. link. We um, we're waiting until after this webinar and then we will right. be uploading all of that information and right. the website will be going live and we'll let you guys know ASAP right. when it does. Yeah, the website will be um, blasted just like uh, you received the invitation to this webinar. So just look out for that in your email inbox and then you'll be able to navigate from there. All right, let's take a look in the question and answer box. Uh, do you have any examples of other people submitting a video? Uh, no, because this is a brand new format that we are beginning for 2020. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, previous applications were 15 page papers. So um, yeah, so we're definitely uh, trying to make this a lot more interactive and a lot more um, appealing to apply. So unfortunately we don't have any uh, video entries. You guys will be the first, um, but um, I, I don't think that that should be an issue for you guys. All right, any other, oh, thank you for my background. This is not my real apartment, by the way. Wish it was. Um, okay. I don't see any other questions or comments coming through. We'll just be on here for another minute or two. And if no one else uh, speaks up, then we will conclude the webinar. You're welcome, Aaron. So oh, I was here. We go. Oh. Will we get an email? Yes. So I uh, I just covered that uh, once the website is live, you will get an e blast from Katka, um, stating the URL and some more information. So yes, be on the lookout in your email inboxes for that. That should be coming uh, within the next week. Will we be able to watch this webinar recording? Uh, yes, so uh, part of the um, content on the new website will be this webinar. Uh, we are currently recording this. So um, you will definitely be able to go back and uh, take a look at exactly what we covered. Um, but like I said, you will also um, have all the um, requirements in writing as well on the, on the, um, the website.
All right, so let's just take a look and see if we have any more questions. All right. All right, so we'll, with that, uh, this, we will conclude this webinar. Uh, thank you all so much for attending. Uh, again, congratulations on uh, completing your virtual NCA experience. Uh, you guys are truly unique. Uh, this has never been done before, and we are all looking forward to receiving your applications for the 2020 Chairman's Award. And we also are looking forward to seeing you at our virtual forum in February 2021. So with that, thank you so much. Good luck and take care for now. Goodbye.